Good afternoon. It is good to be with you this morning. It really is. It is a great place for all of humanity to be. All of humanity is not, but it's a great place for all of humanity to be. Because if the Lord came back right now on the Lord's day, he'll find Christians in the Lord's church meeting. Waiting for his return. You'll find the world doing the world's thing. And I don't care whether you deaf, dumb, or blind. When the trumpet is sound and the clouds roll back, every knee is going to bow and every tongue is going to confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. So whatever your infirmities are, whatever your handicaps are, on that day, on that moment, you're going to be ready, willing, and able to confess him as Christ. So you might as well do it now. Amen. Give him your life now. Amen. Be ready for him now. Because when he comes, you're going to do what he wants you to do. Amen. And I like that. About God. Brothers and sisters, last week, Brother Michael Ross put on Christ. Amen. He said, I've heard enough. I want to have a relationship with God. I want to live the rest of my life for God. And when he comes back for the church, I want to go with him. I want to be that bride, he said, that he's going to come back So, church, this is Brother Ross. For those of you who have missed it, and Brother Ross, as we traditionally do, this is your Bible and this is your statistics. Yes. Because of your injury, brother, you I'll come to you. Yeah. 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 Well, I love doing that. Yeah. I love doing that. Well, in continuing with the truth, please turn to John chapter 8. John chapter 8. The subject this morning where you shall know the truth, and the truth shall make you free. Mm-hmm. Amen. John chapter 8. Mama always used to tell us, tell the truth no matter how it hurts. Tell the truth. Well, Jesus is the truth. We found out thus far in these preachings about him that he's real. That's what the truth is, that he's real. Jesus is not fake. He's real. And he's having some problems with trying to get folks to understand that. And what I want to do before we go to 31 through 32, I want to just read into that. I want to go all the way back to the beginning of the chapter and start reading from there because just like the Pharisees, we are presented with the truth every single day. And just like the Pharisees, we have a tendency to look at things totally different from the truth. Therefore, we blind ourselves, we block out what truth is, and we go on with our sinful behavior, not knowing that the truth is revealing something to us. We just keep going on as if nothing is happening. And I just want to point out a couple of things about the Pharisees, because in talking and saying these things about truth, they just kept going on as if truth didn't matter. Mm-hmm. And, and Jesus ran into those kinds of things, along with his disciples also, in trying to get yeah. people to see that I am reality. Yeah. Because that's what truth is. When you define truth, this is reality. I'm real. Yeah. I was sent for a purpose. And I just didn't come here to come here. With me coming here, God is revealing to you what manner of man you should be. And I'm going to be the final thing to all that you have learned in the law. Because God wants the whole world to be saved. Amen. And you guys got to look at some things a little different than the way you look at some things. 
And that's why he bumped heads with him so many times. He was misunderstood because we always have misunderstood the truth. Yeah. Always. I mean, when your parents was teaching you and my parents was teaching me, didn't you guys have a different perspective on things? Yeah. You just didn't understand how mom and dad was trying to get you to see certain Amen. factual things. Amen? Amen. Amen. And that's just the way human beings are. Religiously, we're the same way. Amen. Once we have locked in and honed in on what we think we should believe and what we think we should do, we totally abandon this. Amen. Now, what we have in front of us this midday, they had walking with them. Yes. I think I need to say that again because yes. so many times we read these stories and it just goes right over our head. Yes. Remember who the Word of God was. Amen. And remember that the Word of God became flesh and dwelled among men. So everything that you and I have in front of us, they had walking and talking with them. And it's yes. the beauty about how God do things like that. Not only did he say it, he showed it. Yes. And I'm one of those kind of people on the half full side of the glass. I learn more with the way you do things than you say things. You, say You're right. you can say things to me all day long, but when I see you operate, yeah, and you make a believer out of me. Amen. And Jesus was there to show people how to live, show people the light, show people how to love. Yeah. And it was still misunderstood. That's some scary stuff, y'all. But Jesus went to the Mount of Olives. Now early in the morning, he came again into the temple, and all the people came to him, and he sat down and taught them. And this is some of the positive things I like about Judaism. Mm -hmm. This is some of the positive things I like about being Jewish religiously. Early in the morning, Jesus went to the temple. They was already there. Yeah. 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 It was already there. Yeah. Early in the morning, are you already there waiting on God? Hey. Hey. When you open your eyes, are you ready for God to come into your life early in the morning and navigate yeah. your day? Yeah. Some of these things we read about these people, we, we have to understand that these things were ingrained in them. Yeah. Sometimes we got to drag people to church on the Lord's day. <laughs> But early in the morning, they was at the temple. Man, that's a good audience for a preacher. When you get there, they're already there. Amen. Early in the morning, they got temple business on their mind. Early in the morning, every single day, Christians should have God on their mind when they wake up because he didn't have to do these things. But he did. Now the scribes and the Pharisees brought to him a woman caught in adultery, and when they had set her in the midst, they said to him, Teacher, this woman was caught in adultery in the very act. Invade that woman's privacy like that. <laughs> Always wondered, how did they know where to go? Man. How do you know where to go? To find somebody in the very act. <laughs> Early in the morning, you should have been in the temple, not minding somebody else's business. But that's not the story. Now, Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what do you say? Yes. Now, this is early in the morning. This they said, testing him that they might have something of which to accuse him. You notice how the story is unraveling? They didn't care about the woman, and obviously they didn't care about the man because they didn't bring him. They wanted to mess with Jesus early in the morning. See, we know that he's going to be around the temple. So we're going to get there first. Y'all go out there and find somebody because we want to trick him at the temple. I thought the temple was a place of worship. I thought that the mindset when you're in the temple was to worship God, not accuse him of something. But then you didn't even feel that Jesus was the Son of God. Truth right in front of their face, and they paid no mind. But Jesus 
stooped down and go around the ground with his finger as though he did not hear. So when they continued asking him, he raised himself up and said to them, He who is without sin among you, let him throw a stone at her first. Now you will find that in Deuteronomy 17, 7. Now remember, Jesus is operating under the law. Remember we're talking about truth. There are some things that the Pharisees did that was lawful, and there were some things that they didn't do that was lawful. Now, it was lawful that if you were caught in the act of adultery, you are to be stoned. Now, remember, this is another case. Remember the sinner at Simon's house. This is another case where mercy is being displayed. Because she's caught. She's caught. All right? And she's standing before the Pharisees and the Sadducees, and now the truth must work. Yes, Lord. You got me. How many times have we said that? Yes. You got me. Have mercy. Yes, Lord. Well, you standing before mercy. And that wasn't coming from the Sadducees and the Pharisees. And then those who heard it being Convicted by their conscience, uh-oh. Oh. Now we know how they know where she was. Yeah. Uh-oh. 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 Went out one by one. By one. <laughs> Amen. Excuse me, I, I think I heard my sheep. <laughs> oh, the wife told me to stop by the market. I got to go. This meeting is over. Because, see, if I stay, the truth is going to come out. I see it writing on the ground. I don't know if that was about me or not. But I'm not going to stick around to find out. Because I'm not standing before a brother Pharisee. I'm standing before God. That I did not even exist. Let me leave while the leaving is good. And you notice that they didn't say, come on, guys, let's go. Let's go one by one. Amen. <laughs> Let me get out of here. Yeah. That's what the truth does to your life. It reveals the lie. And one by one, because somebody's going to find you out. It was all right to spread her business. But as a Pharisee and a Sadducee, don't mess with my reputation. Because God forbid Somebody find out I was down on Crooked Street <laughs> early in the morning where I shouldn't have been. I should have been at the temple. Mm. See how these stories unravel when the truth is around? Don't let this stuff go over your head while Jesus is talking. Because in Deuteronomy 17, 7, she should die. But there are some people standing there too that should be held by the hand and stoned also. Because they're standing Amen. before the truth that will make them free. Amen. Think about the church. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Just got to love the way these people always messing with Jesus. And he's being so kind so godly, because this is what he came into the world for. Beginning with the oldest, even to the last, and Jesus was left alone. And the woman standing in the midst, when Jesus had raised himself up and saw no one but the woman, he said to her, woman, Where are those accusers of yours? Has no one condemned you? She said, no one, Lord. 
Isn't it amazing how those that sin get recognition to God when those that are righteous do not? Yeah, that's amazing. Father, I'm guilty. Lord, I'm guilty. No, they're not standing around. But you're still here. Amen. Yes, Lord. I got to confess that you're still here. I know those men. Oh, my God. I want to get to know the truth. Yeah. See, the truth is not in them. Isn't the story beautiful? See, you can't go to 31 and 32 without going back and starting at the beginning. Because there's something that Jesus is talking about that they have totally dismissed when it comes down to the truth. Amen. And that's how the truth functions in everyday life, in the lives of everyday human beings. Amen. A lot of us live lives of lies, knowing that the truth will make us free. But we choose not to travel down the straight and the narrow. Amen. And truth says to her, 11b, neither do I condemn you. What did Deuteronomy 24, 7, I mean 17, 7 say? She should have been stoned to death. Remember, brothers and sisters, she's still guilty. Yes, she is. You part me. She never denied being in trouble. If there's no one around to condemn you, neither do I. And yes. now you need me to say that because I'm true. Yes, Lord. It's important that I say that. What yes. they say is not important. They're not even around here to say anything to you. You need to hear that from me. Amen. Yes. When you have done wrong, when I have done wrong, doesn't it sound better when the apology is given and the apology is accepted? Yes, Lord, it sure does. <laughs> if yes. you can change some things that you've done in your life wrong, would you do them again knowing the consequences of those things now? No, no, no. 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 Wouldn't it be nice to have the master come up in your living room while you're confessing those things, <laughs> put his arms around you and say, don't worry about it? Yes, sir. Don't worry about it. Amen. Well, you know what? That's called Calvary. Yes. Because that's where the truth took Jesus. Yes. Lord. Where he can officially say to the world, don't worry about it. Amen. I should have done my truth. Yes, Lord. I am real. Look at me. Yes, sir. That's John chapter 8, y'all. And that's what's oh, going to make us free. Reality. Oh. I'm telling you. I'm telling you, you gotta love him. Every time you read about him, you gotta love him more and more and more. Amen. Then Jesus spoke to them again, saying, I am the light of the world. He who follows me shall not walk in darkness, but have the light of life. The Pharisees therefore said to him, You bear witness of yourself. Your witness is not true. Well, back in at the Jordan River, this same writer baptized this same Jesus. That same writer bore witness of who that was. And on top of that, the Father said, this is my beloved son, whom the Holy Spirit is on right now, that did what? It's what? Make me well pleased. There are four witnesses of Jesus being the Son of God. The law say you need two. God gave four. Yes, so. Keep messing. Just keep messing. Mm. Jesus said, even if I bear witness of myself, my witness is true. I'm true. My witness is true. For I know where I came from and where I'm going. But you do not know where I come from and where I'm going. Not that's the fact. You don't know where I came from. I know where I came from. I came from God. My deity is the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Y'all don't know that because you didn't, you haven't been to heaven. And at the rate you going, you ain't going. Because you don't believe the words that I'm saying down here in the flesh. How you gonna believe I came from the Father? Amen. Stupid is what stupid does. <laughs> Amen. 
You judge according to the flesh. I judge no one. That's not why I'm here. I judge no one. And yet if I do, but let's get it straight. My judgment is true, for I'm not alone. But I am with the Father who sent me. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am the one who bears witness of myself, and the Father who sent me bears witness of me. He said it back in John, the first chapter and second chapter of John. He said that. Okay, so Jesus is just reiterating what God has already said that they deny. So if you deny the Son, you deny the Father. If you don't believe me, you don't believe God. So if you didn't believe God then, you definitely ain't going to believe him now. Amen. History lesson. And it was not long ago when that actually occurred. And the Pharisees was there. What did John call them? Standing on the fringes. Even his cousin rebuked them. Because they wasn't there for the truth. Therefore, they're not going to be set free. Amen. Then they say, then where's your father? And Jesus answered, you know neither me nor my father. If you have known me, you have known my father also. These words Jesus spoke in the treasury as he taught in the temple. And no one laid hands on him, for his hour had not yet come. Then Jesus said to them again, I'm going away and you will seek me. And will, you will seek me and will die in your sins. Where I go, you cannot. That's a condemnation on them, y'all. That's a condemnation on them. How would you like Jesus to come in your church and tell your religious leaders that you do that? Because remember who you're standing before. You're standing before the church. You ain't standing before me. You're standing with me. And if Jesus came in here and started eyeing us and saying, X, Y, and Z is not going, Jesus meant that. And you know what? Jesus said, you're not going, you ain't going. For the rest of your life, you might as well sit and do what you want to do because Jesus already know your heart. You're not, going, you're not going to pay the truth any mind. You're just going to do what you want to do. And doing what you want to do, the wages of sin death. is death. 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 Yeah. Yeah. So the Jews said, will he kill himself? Because he said, where I go, you cannot come. And he said to them, you are from beneath, I am from above. You are of this world, I am not of this world. Therefore I say to you that you will die in your sins, for if you do not believe that I am he, you will die in your sins. Religious groups, watch out what you say about the Son of God not being the Son of God. Remember, God didn't do this because he didn't have nothing else in heaven to do. Sin means a lot to God. So when you start saying Jesus is not the Son of God religiously, watch what you're talking about. Amen. God is not deaf. There is no wax in God's ear. Mm. God hears every idle word that you and I speak. Be mindful of that. If you don't have nothing else to do with your words, go down to the water and talk to the sea. Mm. But don't be saying things about God. Don't be blaspheming God's word or name. You don't know what you're talking about? Just say, I don't know what I'm talking about. Because this is the Son of God. This is true. Yeah. Right here in front of you, that's who he is. Mm -hmm. Just what I have been saying to you from the beginning, I've had many things to, to say and to judge concerning you, but he who sent me is true. And I speak to the world those things which I heard from him. God's going to take care of that. You just go do what I want you to do. And Jesus always was obedient to God. Mm -hmm. They did not understand that he spoke to them of the Father. Then Jesus said to them, when you lift up the Son of Man, then you will know that I am he. Oh, that cross is coming where I'm going to go up. You're going to know then that I'm not slain. Amen. You're going to know then because you won't be able to deny that I am the Son. He who sent me is with me. The Father has not left me alone, for I always do those things that pleases him. And let's talk about that briefly for a minute. Have you ever been spiritually alone or felt spiritually alone? Yeah. Re-examine what you're doing in your life. Yeah. If you're sinning, you are alone. You are alone. Because yeah. God is not going to sin with you. Amen. So you ever felt empty? You ever been in there in your closet, in your prayer closet, at 2 o'clock and 3 o'clock in the morning where you're on your knees and you're praying and you feel real, real bad? Well, you're just like David. 
David felt left alone. Yes, How many times in right. David's prayer that he cried out, right out, Father, don't forsake me, don't leave me. Yes, David never wanted that relationship to depart. Why? Because he didn't want to feel alone. Jesus said, Father, Father, why hast thou forsaken me? That's the first time in his known being. Yes. That he has not talked to the Father, and the Father didn't talk he back. Didn't talk he back. has looked up at the Father, and the Father didn't look back. All he yes. comes sin. Sin will separate you eternally from God, and sin will separate you in the flesh from God right now. If yes. you continue to sin, you know yes. why? God is not going there. There are some places where we can't take God, y'all. God is everywhere, but there are places where God won't go, and it's sin. Amen. There are times when you can take me and we can go somewhere and we do things we ain't got no business doing together. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I know it's wrong, you know it's wrong. Yeah, it's wrong but it's one thing about God, when it's wrong, it's wrong. It's wrong. Amen. He don't play around Amen. with the definition of that like we do. Amen. Kind of like when it's time to pay our taxes. Oh, Lord, <laughs> I know y'all laughing. Y'all know what I'm getting ready to say. I'm not going to even say it because I got such a response. <laughs> You know, you know, when it's called cheating, with God it's called lying. Yes. We call it cheating because it sounds better when we go to court. Yes. <laughs> Some things are very, very new. Last week, Brother Keller brought out abiding so eloquently in 31 Jesus said to those Jews who believed him if you abide in my word you are my disciples in me that's a fact you shall know the truth and the truth shall make you free now he said to those Jews who believed him he didn't say to the Jews that denied him he said to the ones that believe him that if you know the truth, if you recognize me as truth, you recognize me as reality, you will be free. Amen. Jesus is trying to get us to see that sin will wrap itself around us, it will bind us, it will keep us in bondage where we can't get loose. You ever played that game as a kid where they tie you up? Some of y'all don't like being tied up even today. But they used to tie you up with all this rope or tape or something like that, and you couldn't move. Or the game was called mummy. You let them tie you up until it got to your neck. After that, you wouldn't let nobody tie your eyes and your nose and everything up. But you know, you were suffocating. Kids think everything's funny. You down there choking. They think you're playing. <laughs> but when they tie you up, can you get out? No. The first thing these criminals and crazy people do when they grab you and snatch you and, and uh, uh, kidnap you, what do they do? They restrict your movement. Now you know where I'm going with sin. You mean to tell me that we rather sin, be restricted, be, be tied up where we can't move, where we're not free? Amen. What happens in those games when you're playing with the kids? I don't want to play no more. They still think it's funny. You know what that even your kids do. You didn't think your kids was that mean and malicious. Watch them around other kids. Now they get to play parent. So they're going to punish somebody else by the way you punish them. Yeah, look at him. He really want to get loose. Now you, the tied up one, is sweating because you forgot to tell them that you have certain phobias. Being tied up was one of them. It's just that it was peer pressure and you let them do it to you. Mm-hmm. Well, sin's not going to let go. It's mad. Think about it. Mm-hmm. It's not going to let go. <laughs> the answer to said, we are Abraham's descendants and have never been in bondage from anyone. How can you say you will be made free? Well, the last time I checked, y'all, what did y'all call the Egyptian bondage? <laughs> yeah, yeah. The last time I checked, mm. what did y'all call the Babylonian captivity? <laughs> yeah. Last time I checked, by the time the Assyrians got the northern kingdom, y'all was already a yeah. You have had bondage all in your history, and you're lying today. <laughs> How in the world can you stand up in front of the truth and say, we always been free? <laughs> Where are y'all right now? Amen. R-O-M-A-N, Roman captivity. Can you leave? (laughs) (laughs) Who do you think you're talking to? 
They treated Jesus every single day of his ministry as if he wasn't real. And the definition of truth is reality. You know how many times in a public conversation that the Pharisees, Sadducees, the lawyers, the scribes simply openly lied to Jesus? What happened to you when you lied to mama? Some of y'all didn't get hit. Some of y'all came from the kind of family where you don't hit children. So you probably got uh, the Dr. Phil thing where they, where they put you on a stool, they time you out. I really wish my mom would have timed me out. But the rooms that we lived in was very limited. Yeah. It's not like we had a four or five bedroom house where my mother can send me one into one of the rooms and say, Ella, go in that room by yourself and sit there till I tell you to come out. Mm. My mom had to do things to me right away. So when you start lying to your parents, what usually happens to you? <laughs> yeah, we came from a culture that jacked you up. <laughs> not a culture that lets you do what you want to do. Well, we let them do what they want to do now. What's happening now? Right. What's happening now? Yeah. Embarrassing parents. Okay. Embarrassing parents. Truth is right along with them, and they're lying to the truth with no regard of what's going to happen to them at all. Not even knowing that when he condemnated them, they, that went over their head. Who are you to tell us where we're going? We've always been with God. No, you haven't. <laughs> Y'all bow down to wood, statues. Gold, silver. You did more dumb stuff to God than it has been pagan people did. You lied then, you're liars now. Amen. In the world, can you tell Jesus the truth that you've never been in bondage to anyone? Well, that's your history. Jesus answered and said, Most sincerely, or surely, I say to you, whenever whoever commits sin is a slave to sin. And a slave does not abide in the house forever, but a son abides forever. Therefore, if the son makes you free, you shall be free indeed. Let's not go through this history lesson. Because before Abraham was, we all keep justifying to me, I am. I am. Abraham knew who I was. David knew who I was. Isaac and Jacob do one way. And you know what, church? They knew who he was, too. And this will be on the website for you. I, I got it all. I just didn't bring it. Genesis 3.15. Genesis 22.18. Genesis 26.4. Deuteronomy 18.15. Psalm 16.9-10. through 10, Psalms 22. All of them. Psalms 14.16.18. One thirty Psalms one thirty two left. Psalms twenty two one. Matthew twenty seven forty six. Psalms twenty uh, two sixteen uh, twenty two. Psalms eighteen one thirty. Look look look. Isaiah nine six and seven. Isaiah forty ten through eleven. Isaiah fifty six. Isaiah fifty two thirteen. Uh, Jeremiah twenty three five. Ezekiel thirty four twenty three. Daniel nine twenty five. Matthew five two. Uh, Zechariah six thirteen, Malachi three one through four, Revelation twenty two sixteen. On and on and on and on, he was prophesied. And y'all got the nerve to stand before me and treat me like y'all treat me, when our whole history is, is Jews produce me coming and standing before you right now. Oh. That seed and that bruise in that garden of Eden yeah. produced oh. me. And that was taught to you. That was taught to me as a child. Remember, Jesus didn't abolish the law. He was under the law. And the same thing that was taught to them at 12 years old, where did they find Jesus in the caravan? Was he with Joseph and Mary? He was back there doing what? Learning the same thing that they had learned. Amen. And y'all got the nerve to call me a liar? Mm. 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 Brothers and sisters, if you want to be free, grab hold of Jesus. Yes. Because there's one thing Jesus is going to do, he will never lie to you. Mm. And the one thing Jesus is going to do, he's going to take care of you. Amen. And to all of yours that have, all of those who have been recently baptized, as I usually said, I just didn't say this um, to you when you got baptized. 
That's one thing you have to remember being added to the church. Dennis and Celeste and Michael, when you look at us in the church, look at us as people who sin and are covered by the blood of Jesus when we repent. Don't let our behavior, hmm. our behavior sometimes, lessen your relationship with God. Amen. Because That's remember, right. we want to on the cross. We are on the yeah. same journey you are. We just ahead of you. Ahead. And don't be surprised that you surpass some of us spiritually. Hmm. Your bicycle may have an extra gear that you found that is in ours that we won't click. Hmm. Amen. Yes, Keep your trust in God, in God. not in us. Not in man. Amen. Hmm. And whenever you open the Bible, believe it in spite of what you're hearing concerning the Bible. Yeah. This way, when something happens to someone that you love dearly in the church, it won't affect your salvation. Keep your eyes on the prize, on the upward calling of God. And this is something they can do. They couldn't do. They paired up with one another. Don't you know the Pharisees and Pharisees hated one another? They had two different doctrines. So when they came down to Jesus, they did what? Hey, 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 let's go. Let's go. Because two is better than one. Let's all game up on it. Because you know what? All of us got something to lose. That's one thing they understood about the church. They had uh, the truth. They had something to lose. Because he came down breaking down all those walls that they had built up about God. And that's the first thing they noticed. Wait a minute. We're not going to be able to go to them dinner parties and get the first seat. We're not going to get the biggest piece of land. We're not going to get the first of everything that they have. Because he said he's the final sacrifice. We got to keep the sacrificial uh, uh, system going because we're doing very well here. We got the best coming in the front and we're selling it out the back. Oh, my God. <laughs> you know what? We have set up a flea market inside the temple. Yeah. We're making money like crazy. Yeah. Don't you all know we got to gang up on this guy? You know, we got to pay Caesar what belongs to him. And we got to continue to make the money that we make. Yes, I see. Mm. I see. Now you understand John chapter 8. I hope I said something to you that has blessed you. I hope that the story, the scriptures that we have read, you were able and will be able to go home and read again and pray about it. And then look at your life. Look at your life. Always look at you first so God can set you free. Then you'll be able to go and sit down with other people and help them with their problems in the areas that they're struggling in. Okay? So be mindful of that. Uh, we thank God for all that has been said and done. If you are in a situation right now where you're not comfortable with Christ, you need to be. The garments are in the back. We get you to some water because they're doing some construction on the second floor pool, but it should be open. It was open last week. Doing some stuff in there during the week. But we get you to some water where you can be immersed. Now, we're not going to sprinkle you. We're not going to pour anything on your forehead. In order for you to uh, uh, share in the death, burial, and resurrection of Christ, you've got to do exactly that. When was the last time you seen a dead person partially above the ground? <laughs> When was the last time you went in a graveyard and seen your loved one's forehead? No, no. Is that a burial? No. State law says what? you got to be well over three feet in the ground. Have you ever seen anybody partially buried? Well, if you've never seen nobody in, in your physical realm partially buried, why should we do something spiritually and have buried? Amen. Mm. Yeah. Thanks, Brother Ellis. I really appreciate you clearing that up because I always struggled with that little bowl that they took and put in their hand and sprinkled it over my forehead. Yeah, nice. You got to go down and you got to go all the way down. All the way down. Because the only way you're gonna, the Father is going to see you in the sun, He got to see you the way the sun was. Yes. Yeah. The sun spent three days. You only spent a few seconds. And when you come up, He's going to see you like the firstborn that came up, which was His son. That's yeah. the easiest way that I can explain it to you. Now, if you do it any other way, you did it your way. And you're partially with your forehead up, and you never got buried. Mm. Mm. Now, if you have already did that and did that properly, and you sinned, and you fell off the way, it's obvious that your prayers couldn't get you back in the state you need to be in. But we can pray for you and help you out, because we've been there, and we've done that. And let the prayers of the saints free you. Now, if you fit in one of those two categories, 
Come now as we stand and sing the song that has been prepared. 903. Would you be free from the world?